As my rain collection system has grown, I have wanted to implement a first flush system to help reduce the number of contaminants that may end up in my rain barrels. If you are unsure what a first flush is or why you might need one, this video should help simplify the concept, so let's jump right into it. So I decided to go with the downspout first flush kit by rain harvesting because of the great reviews and to reduce the amount of work necessary. I will also leave links to all the major parts used in this video in the description below. Before putting the first flush completely together, I dry fitted a few of the components to get a general idea of the best placement for the system. Also, I'm using clear 3 inch PVC pipe to help demonstrate how the first flush system works, but in a typical installation, you will most likely use standard white PVC pipe to help reduce the cost and the risk for algae growth. Once I determined a good position to place the first flush system, I went ahead and cut into my existing inflow pipe. I then installed the pipe bracket that would hold the T-junction. Afterwards, using a hacksaw, I cut 3 feet of 3 inch PVC pipe that will be used for my first flush chamber. Also, depending on your environment and the size of the roof used to collect rainwater would determine the chamber length needed for your application. I will provide a link to the diversion recommendations in the description below. Also, to assist with cutting the pipe straight, one tip was to insert the PVC pipe through a large hose clamp and align and tighten the clamp where the pipe needed to be cut. This provides a straight guide for the hacksaw to brace up against. For my other PVC cuts, I decided to use my cordless bandsaw to see if that would make the process easier. I found that it does cut quicker, but due to the increased power, you have to be careful not to accidentally cut into the hose clamp. Once the 3 inch PVC components were cut, I installed the ball seat into the T-junction. The ball seat is the component that will prevent the ball from exiting the chamber, which I will show you later. After the chamber was installed, I began to work on the bottom portion of the first flush system. The long plastic white piece is the plastic filter screen. The filter is used to help prevent the slow release control valve from clogging. The kit includes several sizes in case you experience blockages with the small control washer. Also, make sure the valve is inserted with the side mark top still showing. And if you are a little confused about how this valve works, don't worry, I'll show you how it all works once everything is assembled. It's also recommended to install a 45 degree PVC bend adapter to make removing the screen cap easier. However, this is optional. I used a level to make sure the chamber was positioned straight up and down before securing the bottom of the system to the wall. When I started to work on the three inch PVC pipes that would connect to the left and the right side of the T-junction, even after sanding the pipe some, I noticed that I was not able to fully seat the pipe into the fitting, which would make it difficult for me to accurately cut the remaining PVC parts. So I decided at this point to just go for it and start adding PVC cement to all my PVC parts. As you can see, after adding PVC cement to the fitting, the pipe slots right into the T-junction without any issues. It is also important to make sure you apply a liberal coat of cement to the pipe to the depth of the socket. As you insert the pipe into the T-junction socket, push the pipe fully into the fitting using a 1 4th inch turning motion until the pipe is fully seated into the pipe. Lastly, hold the pipe for about 30 seconds to prevent pipe push out. After the T-junction fittings were installed, I installed a 3 inch to 1 and 1 half inch PVC reducer on both sides. I then installed a 1 and 1 half inch to 3 4 inch PVC reducer which would then allow me to connect my existing system to the T-junction. 
Again, depending on your setup, these reducers may not be necessary. As most rain collection systems are built with 3 inch and 4 inch PVC pipe. However, for this project, I didn't want to have to redo my entire downspout setup. To create a simple way to remove the first flush from the system if I ever needed to, I installed a PVC union fitting. Once all my components were attached together with PVC cement, it was exciting to see everything coming together as planned with little to no issues. Now, this next part is probably optional for 99% of you watching, but since I'm using clear PVC pipe, I needed to block the sunlight from entering the pipe to help prevent algae growth. I could paint the pipe, but I also wanted to be able to check the system in the future to see if it was still working properly. So I decided to wrap the clear PVC pipe with a high quality HVAC wrap that was water repellent, mildew resistant, and blocked any light from passing through. Once I confirmed the HVAC wrap fit properly and will work for my needs, I removed the first flush system and prepared the white PVC components for painting to help increase their lifespan. I used 120 grit sandpaper to lightly scratch up the PVC components to help my spray paint stick to the surface. After adding two to three coats of paint to the first flush system and allowing it to dry, I reattached it to my system. I also inserted the ceiling ball which will rest on top of the filter when no water is present in the chamber. Since it was not scheduled to rain for another day or so, I decided to simulate rain by using my home's water source. So as water is diverted from my downspout into the first flush T-junction, you will notice water first enters the inlet chamber and then flows into the bottom chamber. As the bottom chamber fills up with water, the ceiling ball is slowly lifted by the rising water. Once the ceiling ball makes contact with the ball seat, because the bottom chamber is now sealed by the green ball, the water starts to flow from the inlet chamber to the outlet chamber. In an unsimulated situation, the bottom chamber will contain most or all the first layer of contaminants or debris that may have been resting on your roof surface. At the bottom of the first flush system, you will notice the slow release control valve releasing a steady stream of water. So when it stops raining, the bottom chamber will automatically be drained or reset and prepared for the next rain cycle. I noticed that the control valve washer I used was a bit on the large side, so I decided to try to use a smaller control valve. 
The manual states to use a larger washer if you start to experience blockages, so this will be more of a trial and error experience initially. After testing everything and seeing the system work properly, I decided to go ahead and finalize my installation by reinstalling the HVAC wraps. Also, when it comes to winterization, all I need to do is remove the bottom screw cap to prevent the first flush chamber from collecting water so the pipe and other PVC components are not fractured during a hard freeze. I must say this was an exciting project to take on since I'm more of a visual learner and even though the clear PVC was quite expensive, I think it was worth it because of how much I learned and hopefully you learned something as well. If you would like to learn more about how my rain collection system works, be sure to check out this video here. Also, if you have not already and you enjoy these types of videos, bump that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos and to help spread the word about this channel. I'd also like to thank the following people for signing up recently to become a supporter of Green Tech Town. Your support is greatly appreciated and it helps to keep this channel going. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.